Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Um, we're being joined here by an environmental rights activist and an indigenous of Ogoni land to discuss a topic we raised earlier. Uh, this was a judgment that a court delivered in Lagos in June 2010, and that's for the payment of compensation to Ogoni communities um, that have been ravaged by oil spillage. Um, many years later, in June 2020, um, August 2021, um, we've heard from the lawyers of the Royal Dutch Shell, Shell confirming that they are willing to go ahead and pay that compensation of 45.9 billion naira to those communities that are involved. Um, let's now say hello to our guest, Mr. Celestine Akubari, an Ogoni land environmental activist. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Mr. Akubari, can you hear me? Good morning, Nigerians. Thanks for having me. Good morning. I can hear you. Good okay. morning, Nigerians, and thanks for having me. Okay. Let's get your initial response to this um, judgment and the news when you heard it yesterday. How do you and, in fact, the people of Ogunilan feel about it? Well, we all feel elected. We are happy. But um, no matter how much share pays, it cannot take away the pace from the heart of the Ogoni people. Because um, quite a lot have been lost. The entire livelihood of our people have been lost. Lives have been lost. Maybe you, you've not gone through your neighbor report on Ogoni. That is a death sentence. And, and, and as far as I'm concerned, this is a battery sum. It is a slap on the wrist of shell. And, and I think um, at the most appropriate time, the Ogoni people will be filing a suit against share based on the recommendation of UNED because um, Ogoni people will take nothing less than a 10 billion US dollars for the oil spills in the land. So um, this is one way forward. But, but, but like I said, we are happy and we can say that Ken Sarua was being very prophetic at the point of his death because he said that. The day of sharing the dock was coming, and they will pay for all the atrocities. Oh, and we are beginning to see them. A few years back, they, they paid 57 million pounds to the community. Now they are paying this. Very soon, the Ogale and Goy community uh, bees will come up. Okay, Mr. Akubari, you said something earlier I wanted to follow up on. Um, you mentioned that lives have been lost. So for people who might not understand the scale of the damage, I want you to help us break it down. How exactly have these oil spills affected the livelihoods of people in Ogoni land and in fact the Niger Delta? And how has it, you know, lost lives and, you know, just destroyed people like you, like you claim? Okay, like... If you go through the unit report, because that's the only scientific document now that we can, you know, but even if that report did not meet up uh, our expectations, but it is the only report available now that validates, you know, what we'll be talking about. That report says that the water we take in Ogoni land is 900 times worse than the level recommended by World Health Organization, and that there is hydrocarbon in the air that we breathe, hmm. and there is a cancer causing carcinogen called benzene in every water taking Ogoni. And that in every water taking Ogoni is coated with crude oil about 8 cm. Yeah. That must surely be a death sentence. So it means that every person that is alive in Ogoni has been breathing in poison hmm. and eating poison. And that five feet of the land was dead. So everything in that environment smells dead. And that some people were born and are living all their life in this same environment. And there are no alternative uh, drinking water or food for anybody. The same dead things are what we are eating. And that's why life has become so short in Ogoni. If you go to Ogoni weekends, the only thing that is happening is festival of burial. Wow. Everywhere is burial. So when somebody dies at the age of 30, you see people putting up... Uh, there are uh, uh, posters and, and said that uh, thanking God for a life well spent. For 30 years, traditional rulers are young boys. If I wanted to be a chief, I would be a chief now. You know? All right, Mr. Popari. So, 
Right, Mr. Akwabari, what, what would you describe as, um, or what would you say would make sense as justice for the Ogoni people? Aside the 45 uh, billion naira uh, payment to the people, um, what else would you, you know, would you expect uh, that should be done that you would say, okay, this looks more like justice for the degradation of, of their land for the last couple of decades? Yeah. One thing that should happen is that the government should come out to declare a state of emergency in Ogoni, total emergency in all areas, health, education, security, everything in all I mean, Don't declare a special status, just like you said, Abuja Federal Capital Territory. Just declare emergency there. Then um, exonerate cancer who are all those who were murdered innocently. Because from what we are seeing now, uh, it shows that the conspiracy between Shell and the government to just murder Ogoni people, we are just to silence them. So, um, the declaration of the state of emergency, can you imagine that UNEP released such a terrible report and government is yet to react in any way apart from uh, commencing the uh, implementation of that report or what they call the cleanup now? Uh, apart from that, nothing has been done. I mean, don't, don't the government think? Don't they think or do they believe that human beings don't live there? This is the best sentence that has been presented to you. That audio report was commissioned by the federal government themselves and not the Ogoni. So we are yet to see justice. Money cannot bring back one head of cancer over. Not to talk about the over 2,000 persons that were put to more murdered in cold blood innocently. Okay, you, you made a statement earlier saying that there's a conspiracy between Shell and the government. Could you explain? Yeah, Shell and the federal government, they are two sides of the same coin. They all go to bed together every night. Because uh, while the government is distributing, all the money that government makes uh, come from the oil exploration activity that Shell is fronting. Shell has I've been arrested quite a number of times by by shell officials they just call the military i can't forget one time myself reverend Mubasi, che begula and several of us we went to Ureka, that's plan just to observe the purple gary drying things and before we knew it two full truckload of soldiers has, has appeared who called the soldiers the security officer common security officer of shell they have the right to summon people in 1990 Thousands of people die in Umbuchem, including the king. People ran into his palace for safety. They entered their bomb the house, bomb the house, kill the king, kill his children and everything. So they have the power to call um, the military or the riot police. And that power can only be exercised by the commander in chief. So if Shell could do that, then it means that they are uh, partners in crime with the government of Nigeria. And government in Nigeria cannot remove themselves from all the crimes that Shell has committed in this, this country because the government is supposed to regulate the activities of Shell. Shell is just a, like a guest here. They do the amount of crime that they commit here because they are permitted to do so. Hmm. So uh, I'm actually... Uh, I, I want us to, you know, let's, let's look further at the government, like you've mentioned, you know, and bring it down to the state level um, and also maybe also the local government level. Um, yes, you know, the, the shell is meant to be under the regulations of the federal government. Um, they, whatever they are doing or whatever, you know, crimes they are allegedly committing um, should, not be, should not go unnoticed without, you know, the federal government. But, you know, I want, us, you know, I want you to share your thoughts on how the state government and the local governments um, around the Ogoni land and the whole Niger Delta may have also failed to make life better for the Ogoni people. Yeah, definitely, if you look around, there is a total absence of government in all, all, at all levels, whether they are local, whether they are state, especially the one you call 18% derivation that is supposed to go directly to community people. So the state government, the agencies of government like the NDDC, they are not absorbed from, from this. They are all part of it. But uh, they are, they, when we say government, all of them are... are, are, are part of the government, but the Ogakpa, Kakpa, of them, they are the people that sign agreements with um, 
uh, uh, the, the oil companies, they are the people, the oil is under their uh, executive order. So they get their work from Abuja and they come to your community. So even if it is the much respected gravesite of your father, they brush it away, if it is on their right of way, whether it is school, whether it is a church, whether it is newly cultivated crops, whether ripe crops will happen and you are yet to abet and they are on their way, they brush it aside and take it because they are escorted by soldiers and they can do anything and get away with it. So uh, the government hiding under the line use act or whatever has taken everything that the people own from them. And and, and that's and that's it. So they are all they are all partners in crime. So, Mr. Kobori, um, when we look at the wealth generated from the Niger Delta, what exactly should that place look like now, in contrast to what it is? Well, that place should look better than Dubai, because it's a very small place. And the amount of money that has come out from there should make the Niger Delta better than a today's Dubai. So, but it is unfortunate that corruption and the lack of vision has uh, made our people, you know, to be the way they are. But well, like, like they say, whenever a man wakes up, he starts his day. Uh, the people can still wake up, take their destiny in their hands, and ask that their life be better, and it can still be done. Mr. Kobari, I want you to give me specifics. Like, what are the states, what's the state of infrastructure in that area? Look at the schools, the roads, the, you know, just be specific in how you feel that that Oguni land should look like when you say Dubai. Like, I want you to give me the specifics of, you know, the future of what Oguni land should be. Mr. Kobari, can you hear me? Okay. Um, it's unfortunate that we seem to be losing Mr. Kubari. He is an Ogoni land environmental activist um, speaking here on The Breakfast um, about the recent court judgments. Uh, this was obviously you know, issued about uh, uh, 10 years ago, 2010 June, um, asking you know, Shell to go ahead and give compensation to um, um, communities in Ogoni land, um, the sum of 45.9 billion naira for all the oil spill and the damage to their communities, to their lives and to their health. And talking about that UN document you mentioned, I, I am looking at it. it. It really details just exactly what, you know, people in that, those organic communities are facing. You can imagine how someone, you know, can't even drink water and water, water is laced with, with crude oil. You can imagine the, you know, just the level of health damage. And what he said really struck me regarding how there are burials, funerals every weekend in a no. region that, you know, people say should be better than Dubai. It's, it's just unfortunate that years and years after um, the cleanup was set to have started, you, you, you see have, I mean, there's, there's a report by Amnesty International that puts the level of implementation of that cleanup at a mere 11%. Well, 11% might, well, I don't want to doubt Amnesty International's figures, you know, but I, I think the 11% might even be pushing it. Um, it's really very dependent on what they, what they mean by cleanup and, you know, what, the requirements you know from government are for the Ogoni people um, after cleaning up their waters and cleaning up their farmlands which to be honest I don't think it's even possible to really completely clean up those areas but at least you can do it to some extent um, where it now becomes more you know habitable but aside that um, it doesn't stop there there's still demands for better governance for you know those communities they still need hospitals they need schools they need better roads they need inf you know g infrastructure generally they need factories they need there's so much that they should be and able to afford. And there's tourism potential. Um, I mean, in other absolutely. places where there's like water Abs bodies, absolutely. you find that those places attract, you know, tourists in their, in their thousands. Well, the, so why can the Niger Delta be like that? exist in the Niger Delta. And I, I always would like to remind, uh, guys, I know that, you know, we're aware, but it's, it should never be left out of the conversation that Shell, no doubt, um, may have had its, you know, the allegations against Shell and, and the, you know, the crimes that they have been, you know, mentioned to have committed with regards to environmental pollution and degradation in Ogoni land and the whole of the Niger Delta. But the conversation concerning how much the Nigerian government itself, whose sole responsibility is for the lives and security of the Nigerian people. And the welfare. And the welfare of the Nigerian people 
has also completely failed the Ogoni people. I mean, it's he describes it like them going to bed together. Yeah, so it's, it's not just Shell. Shell, yes, should work with the laws that the Nigerian government sets, you know, for them. They should operate with the regulations set for them by the Nigerian government. And when they fail, they should be cautioned by the Nigerian government, which we've not really seen happen. But aside that, the Niger Delta people themselves, and it's, it's something that I wish they would do a little bit more of, and that is to question their government at the state and the local government level. Yes, I know that you know, these oil companies have a lot of questions to answer, but how many questions have been sent or been put to the state government, to the NDDC, to the local government? There's local governments across the whole of the Niger Delta state that receive hundreds of millions of Naira every month. I'm not saying annually. Every local government receives 100, 250 to 200 million naira every month. I want to that believe, is their allocation. I want to believe that they do that to some extent. I mean, that's the reason why they were able to take this matter to court. I mean, these are Ogoni communities who put heads together to take this matter to court back in 2010 that led to these judgments we're talking about today. Protests that are being held. I mean, we invited somebody um, in the Niger Delta, one of these journalists, who talked about the level of you know environmental damage that, that people are facing. So I want to believe that the people are doing something. We're seeing this in the news it's now left to the government really it's all in the government hands now because you heard him mention that these you know oil companies they have the military in their pockets and they carry the military along with them to terrorize the people should the military not be protecting the people of Ogoni land should they not be protecting us why should they be bought why should they be paid for to terrorize oh. the people that they should be protected. Oh. Questions that we need to ask, also important questions long term regarding. They shouldn't be out, out of the barracks in the first place. Exactly. Oh, regarding. Sure. Okay, um, Mr. Mr. Kobari. Yes. Yes, okay. you, were, you were sharing your thoughts there about how, um, what exactly Ogoni land should look like with the level of wealth that, you know, currently is in that place. Yeah, I was just telling you that um, last week I left, I left a, a protest. You know, to occupy the east-west road. <laughs> that road leads to two refineries, two seaports, another college, a petrochemical plant. It leads to the oil and gas free zone. It leads to a quiet bomb state, Frost River, Anthony Opopo Kika. That was unnecessary. For us community people to shop a place that has all the economic presence. That road apart from Papa is the most economically viable in Nigeria. So that, that shows how the government and the oil companies treat Ogoni people. A journey that will take the Ogoni people at 24 minutes. We stay on that road for two days. I am not exaggerating. Two days to get to Ogoni. A journey of 24 hours. So Going forward, like I said, they just declare a state of emergency. All the schools in Ogoni are dilapidated. They are not here care. I am not saying something that is not right. I have gone to General Hospital, Bori Ogoni, where I come from. If you want to want the, the doctors to, 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 to conduct operation surgery on your on your family people that you bring, you are a generator. In the you would hire a generator in an oil producing territory. It shouldn't happen. Wow. All right. Mr. Pobari. Um, so I'm not talking about electricity. Electricity is luxury. That one is luxury. You wouldn't even say it. But the livelihoods of the people, the people are predominantly fishermen and farmers, that have been destroyed. The livelihoods of the people have been completely eroded. So, I mean, Mr. Pobari, um, in a place that people are working corpses. Yeah. Oh, I, I want you to, you know, finally speak on, you know, now that there is this judgment that there's going to be 45 billion uh, Naira. Uh, given to the people, um, what do you expect to play out? You know, and how many families, communities um, will get to receive these funds? Um, do you think that you know they will at least celebrate? You know, these funds being given to them. How do you expect this to play out? Well, we have gotten money more than this in Bordeaux, but in Bordeaux is a small community, so. Why do you say 45.9 billion? To you, it looks so big. But if you look at the number of people involved, it's not that too big. I'm telling you that we are going to put up a suit of 10 billion US dollars against Shell based on what we now know from the UNED report. So that what you what, what you saw there yesterday is like you take my shirt from me and cut one small button from the shirt and give it to me. That's what has happened. 
So, yeah, we are happy that for the first time, a Nigerian court will stand their ground to say something that is reasonable. Because what we've seen from the past has always been shared, bribing the court, and they continue to adjoin the cases until all the litigants will die. That's what we have been seeing. But I'm happy that maybe they've heard that the uh, overseas courts at the Hague, the US, and London have started giving favorable judgment against you. So they are now learning. That, if there's any joy, any excitement I have, is that a Nigerian court will stand their ground. That's the only joy I have. Otherwise, that's some is patrick. It's patrick compared to the damages and the, and the atrocities the company has committed in Ogoniland. All right. Um, Celeste Nakobari, Ogoniland environmental activist, thank you very much for your time this thank morning. Thank you. Uh, we will reconnect with you again as uh, quickly as possible. Thank you for having me. All right, brilliant. Uh, stay with us. Uh, now we're talking to you. Yes, International Youth Day. Um, we'll give you more details about that regarding how Nigeria has fared in the recent ranking of countries around the world.